Go. Hey, this is Rodney Ho for HAC.com. I'm here with Marcus Samuelson, the winner of Top Chef Masters. Congratulations. Thank you very much. How are you? How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing really great. And uh, I presume this was taped a while ago, but what was the feeling like watching it again? <laughs> it was so exciting to watch it. I watched it with my, uh, a bunch of my friends. We were like 30 people in, in my partner's um, apartment. And two minutes before the show started, the TV went out. I touched the ro wrong um, uh, <laughs> no, button on the remote, and it took it like five minutes to get it up again. <laughs> it was like, I'm like, is this a joke? But it was, we, it was like nerve wracking. You know, although I knew the outcome, it's like, well, you know, because you don't know the, you know, the narrative and how, you know, the cliffhanger way, you know. Right, right. And uh, did you feel like going in that you were a little bit of an underdog, or did, given what the other guys were saying, or that they were a little no. bit more? No? No, 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 it was pretty much equal field. You felt like at that point. Yeah, no. I mean, I felt like uh, if I focus on what I, you know, if I cook, you know, I focus on if I get the assignment, if I understand the assignment right, I always felt I had a great chance. Right. Um, but you know, it, it, it grows on you gradually because when you get there, first you got the question, do you want to be on Top Chef Master? And the first year I couldn't do it because I just it was just busy, you know, I just couldn't do it. Then the next it's time a, it's I, a month, yeah, it's a month. Yeah, obligation. it's a month's commitment. So, so next time I was like, okay, I can do it. So when you get there and you heard the stories, it's like, all right. We'll see what happens, and then once you're down to the final eight, then it's like, oh, wow, it's a competition, you know, you know, the, you know so, so the competitive juices are uh, flowing, and uh, once it's down to the final four, final three, it's it's on, you know, and um, I loved it. I loved working with uh, Suser and Rick, and I'm actually going after this. I'm going to Vegas to cook with Rick again. Oh, that's great. Oh, yeah, it seems like you guys all got along. It was it was a friendly competition. Right? It was it was definitely very competitive, but also definitely very friendly. And they make it that way too, because you know, shooting is it's a lot of cameras, and you have to wait, and then you know you sit around and you talk and you a lot bond. of downtime. Yeah. And a lot of cooking, a lot of downtown, and then you also have a chance to say, oh, you know, how did it go for you today? Because you don't, like, I never saw another person's dish. I mean, we're in the same kitchen, right? But you, you, you're cooking on a deadline, so you're like, Rrr. so you, you. Do you ever get to taste the other dishes, no, or almost never? In the end, when you know when the day was over, you know, we found ourselves like taking some bread and you know tasting Susan sauce, or you know, go over to bits and pieces, bits and pieces here and there. Really cold food. <laughs> yeah, real cold. But you know what? It's also good because uh, you go like, wow, damn, that's really good, or wow, that was really nice, and stuff like that. So it's good. What, what's been? Um, what you? What do you plan to do from here using? Top Chef Masters anyway. I don't know whether there's anything you could use. I'm your chef already. Well, I, I think I think it's been this year has been amazing. You know, with you doing the state dinner for the Obamas, the first state dinner, and then going on Top Chef Masters, but also you know putting Red Rooster together in Harlem. Uh, it's very How close important. is that to being open? Well, I think it's early fall. We're gonna have it ready, all the pieces, and okay. that's a it's a big commitment, but it's also something I feel I have to do and I want to do for the community, for the neighborhood. I live in Harlem, lived there for a long time. What type of food is what's the concept? Well, it's gonna be like an American comfort food, but uh, also working seasonal and being able to use a farmers market approach on it. So it's it's a lot of different things. Affordability is very important for me. So. Ma hitting all those notes yeah. is a challenge, you know, make it profitable, make it affordable, make it, you know, seasonal, all those things, but I'm committed to it, and that's what we're going to do, so I'm working hard on that, and the other thing after that is Food Republic, my, my web platform, uh, that my, uh, you know, we as a team, editorial, put it together, it's a new way to communicate uh, for us about food, to be part of the, you know, this very vibrant, passionate food dialogue that is online right now. And bringing African cuisine into the more of the mainstream yes. that is clearly your goal, right? Absolutely. And I would guess that you know getting the exposure on the show certainly doesn't hurt. Uh, <laughs> no, but I, I think that's also, we st it's still an underserved market. So yeah, it was one show and it was one platform and I felt like, you know what, Marcus, if they, when the question came, what defines you as a chef? I had to go there. I couldn't avoid that question. You know, mm -hmm. I, you could do, I could do a lot of dishes. Mm -hmm. But you can do Italian, you can do Chinese, exactly, Italian. exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and I'm passionate about both of those cuisines. But, and I think that you know what defined me was that. So I had to look that straight in the eyes and go for it. And and um, it was tricky because obviously I knew that the judges' uh, representation of African food maybe you know wasn't the same as they knew about other cuisines. And, and you but, heard you heard a few of those comments yeah. from the judges. But they also I think they saw and tasted the intent 
And I yes. think they vote a lot also because of the intent. Mm -hmm. And I really appreciate that because those are, um, other, the other casinos are very established and African is not, but it's coming, you know. You, I live in a very vibrant African community in, right. in, in the west part of uh, Harlem, which is Little Africa. And when I'm in Chicago, I see the Nigerian supermarket. And when you're in Minnesota, you see, um, you know, Somalian cuisine. So it's happening, not just in New York and Los Angeles. Right. You know, it's happening. You know, Atlanta has some great Ethiopian restaurants. So yeah. it's happening, you know. Fantastic, great place. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you really use, I thought, it, it, for the first time since I've seen Top Chef Masters, like you really brought a cultural awareness and yeah. education. Like there was that episode where some of the people were like, his fish is breaking it down, mm -hmm. you know, like breaking in a way that they're not used to. And they thought yeah. it was kind of a wrong thing, but it's not really wrong seen no, from the right cultural no, but, perspective. Uh, yeah, but it, it, it's, it's very difficult to, you know, bring something like that up on, you know, on, on TV right away, right? Cultural you bias? Start, you, you have to start somewhere, right? <laughs> right. But, you know, we as, as, as a nation learned a lot about Japanese food, how to in, in, appreciate sushi, the rice should be warm, the pieces should be small, the, the, the fish should be really cut in a certain way. And now everyone knows how to enjoy a good sushi, but that didn't That's go true. overnight. That took a long time. And you I know, got plenty of bad sushi. Yeah. And, and exa <laughs> Thanks exactly. Thanks to supermarkets, now have them. You know what? You're right about that. And I think the, I'm sure the Korean cuisine had to go through that journey a little bit. Mm -hmm. And Indian cuisine, we had to learn vocabulary. We had to learn. It's true. so much in food that we learn besides the, the taste buds. It's vocabulary. It's different cultures. And I think we're in the beginning of ethnic food journey. We're not mm -hmm. in, you know, mm -hmm. and I think America is the best way in the world to highlight that and you know with social media and with internet and with TV and blogs and all that sort of passionate space it couldn't be a better time to be in food you know because it's exciting you know you, you know you have the traditional culture over here and then you have a new culture over here and then you have all these sort of really vibrant people in food well that sounds like a good good time you know absolutely well, thank you so much. It's, thank and this is, thank um, you for having me. Rodney and Hill stay with BJC.com. Around. Thank you. Yeah, and you've got a little demonstration coming up in a little yeah, bit here, right? Absolutely. Here at Macy's here. We're here at Macy's North Point Mall in Alpharetta. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much.